be recording. Hello, everybody. This is Victor Moss, um, real estate attorney, broker, and investor. I'm here with the San Antonio Real Estate Investors Association. We're doing a webinar today on 10 things that kill your profit on a rehab. So a lot of you have come to these webinars trying to stay afloat of what's going on with this pandemic, and we want to stay busy. I'm here in my office at Woodstone and I-10. I moved from Cherry Ridge and 410 to Woodstone and I-10 between Hebner and De Zavala. We're doing lots of warranty deeds, subject to transactions, wraparounds, even wills, and I've even done three probates in the last two weeks. So it's weird how I'm staying busy even through this coronavirus. Before we get started uh, on our presentation, I've invited Maurice to come talk about hard money loans and other loans. He wants to give you money to do rehabs. And between you and I, back in March, I would have never thought the economy would be as strong as it is with regards to real estate. And it is so strong right now, specifically with affordable housing. If you can get a house under 200,000, it's still selling like hotcakes. A year ago, there was uh, about 10,000 homes listed on the San Antonio uh, Board of Realtors. Today, there's less than 7,000. So supply has come down dramatically, but even more so under 200,000. So that creates an opportunity for guys like you and I to go and buy properties and then try to rehab them, make profit. By the way, I've got a real deal. If you stick to the end of this presentation, I have a real deal that I'm willing to wholesale right now in San Antonio at the corner of, not the corner, but near Vance Jackson and Jackson Keller. Vance Jackson, excuse me, Blanco, Blanco and Jackson Keller inside Loop 410. And it's an affordable house that you can rehab and resell for profit. So maybe Maurice can give you a loan. Speaking of Maurice, Maurice, can you, sir, let me do this real quick. Make sure you have your camera on and- how do I get ask to start the video? So there you go. The, Put your video do, on. How do I get the camera on? Uh, do you have the camera on yet, Maurice? No. How do I get it on? Um, well, you go over your button, and you have to you have to have a camera. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing my screen. I don't know if I need a camera. Uh, you know what? Try that one first. Let's see if we can just have your audio, and you can do your presentation. So you you scroll over your screen. It says share the screen. Share the screen. And see what's up. Okay. Get it started that way, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. I don't often do Zoom, so I apologize. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. I, I'm hoping everyone can hear me. My name is Maurice with Value Funding in San Antonio. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with me, I've been uh, with Victor for two, three years now as one of his vendors. Uh, we would have uh, you know meetings on a regular basis. And of course, at that point in time, we would all appear to talk about our products and services. Uh, today, Victor has been kind enough to invite me to visit and share with you on uh, what we do here at Value Funding in order to you know, uh, help with the lending side of the business. So I'm gonna start a presentation, uh, some slides that I've prepared for you that'll give you a general review about the types of loans that here we do at Value Funding. So everyone is working okay on this? Uh, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me okay? Maurice, I can hear you, buddy. So you just go ahead. But I need you to see if you can do a share of the screen so you can do your presentation. Yeah, I can do the share screen right now. There you go. At the very bottom, share the screen. For those who can't see his face, uh, we're not there yet. So bear with us. We're just trying to get Maurice on. For It's been a while since we've had him on. Maurice, if you can do share the screen, go for it, buddy. I did share the screen. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Uh, nope. <laughs> Let's see more. Uh, change roles for a bit. Jen, I can't figure it out how to get him on to do the share the screen. Is she nearby? I've asked to share the video. Did you see that button, Maurice? It says start my video. Yes. Okay, start my video. There yeah. you go. We can see your video now. I'm now, not, make sure you switch the camera down so we can see your head and everything, bud. Well, I'm still wearing my T-shirt and I didn't call Oh, me. okay, okay, all right. But I'm now, in COVID. at the very bottom, it says share the screen, the green button. Do you see that? Yeah. I'm in COVID mode. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. Maurice, do you see share the screen at the bottom? I have, and I'm hitting okay. on it and it says 
host has this disabled participant screen sharing. No. Hang on one second. Let me close that out, Maurice. And sorry, folks who are watching this. We're trying to make it work. Nope, it's not working. Maurice, if you want to, just tell them what you do, buddy, and then I will put it in the messages how they get a hold of you. Real quickly, what is your phone number? 210-649-8807. Right, the company's and called Value Funding Incorporated. Value Funding? Incorporated. Okay, so I'm, just I'm let work. them know, Maurice, what you can do to help them, and then we'll go from there, okay? Because they now have your phone number and everything. What's your email, by the way, Maurice? Contact at valuefunding.net. Contact at valuefunding.net. Correct. There so, you go. All right, Maurice, I'm a, I want to be a flipper. How can you help me out? Go. Well, we do a variety of loans. Uh, we do buy and hold, and we do, of course, hard money. So if you're looking to flip, we do saw hard money with some really good rates and good programs to help you out. So we're covering 85% of the uh, appraised value and also 70% uh, uh, of the ARV. So those are the programs that I'm running. I also have a no doc loan program with no tax returns and multiple ways that you can qualify for a loan. And those were the slides I'm gonna to present to you, but it looks like we're not gonna be able to make it. But for those of you who want to do buy and hold, I can help you there with VA, FHA, and conventional uh, loans as well. So for those of you who are investors, you may not have the best tax returns, and no doc is a great avenue to, to look into as far as getting qualified. So one of the ways I can help uh, people is we have a profit loss program with 12 months of uh, profit loss statements without tax returns, and we look at your P&L. We also have a 24 month bank statement program, which uh, of course can help a, a lender, I'm, saying, I'm sorry, a borrower, you know, get into a house uh, if you'll provide me the 24 months of bank deposits. For those of you who have uh, limited income, I mean uh, funds to work with, we have what's called a debt service ratio loan. If your mortgage payment is a 1.25 greater than your mortgage payment, you'll cover what's called a debt service ratio, and that'll get you into a property, providing the cash flow is correct and suffice, you know, the needs of uh, what, where we're looking for to get into a loan. So we have a variety of ways for people to qualify into a loan. Just got to contact me at contact at valuefunding.net. Let me get a proposal together. Let me learn about your property, where it is, and, and some of the other details. So that's the way, the best way to get a hold of me and you know get back to me and tell me what you're trying to do. But we, we do have some good programs, whether it be buy and hold or for fix and flips. So if, uh, if uh, you can, uh, uh, Victor, put my uh, name and info on the screen. I'm sorry we weren't able to get the slides. Maurice, I put it in the chat button at the very bottom. Great. And so the, there it is, there's your phone number and contact at valuefunding.net. If any of you have any questions for Maurice on hard money loans, loans to buy and rehab homes, would you please put them in the chat button while we have Maurice. Maurice, uh, real quickly, for those that are just new to their first deal ever, my experience has been if you want to buy a property and it makes sense, you put it under a sales contract. But before you even do that, you should get pre-approved for a home loan, hard money loan, excuse me. And don't you think that that's what they should do? They should contact you to see what the terms will be of the loan to make sure their due diligence is done and then then present a written offer to their seller. What do you yeah, think? I absolutely agree. And I don't mean to be condescending in any way, but a lot of, a lot of what you call gurus out there will talk about you know, all kinds of properties, how to buy them, what strategies, but very few or rarely does it ever happen that Hey, any one of those so-called gurus out there is even talking about how to get a loan once you get that property in your hands. And that's a big flaw. And uh, that's why I have a webinar uh, on Wednesdays of my own, which I cover, you know, some of the loan types that I just quickly ran through with you and, and propose that you should go to a lender, whether it be me or someone else, but certainly go to a lender and get yourself pre-qualified. Of course, I, I'm open my doors to you at any given time if you want to you know, talk about any given property, whether it be residential or commercial, by the way. But 
Hard money is uh, one of the, about 80% of my business. And it's been greatly uh, due to my, uh, how should I say, participation with you, Victor, on, on the meetings that we've had, you know, in the past. So again, I, I welcome the opportunity to help anyone out there who's looking to buy property or refinance. Thank you, Thank you so much. You bet. So for everybody who's watching this, it's very simple. You want to do a flip and make sense. You're going to make a profit. Do yourself a favor, contact Maurice or someone in that industry to get pre-approved for a loan first. Then you can go look for your deals. When you go to your wholesalers or your sellers, they want to see that you've got your ducks in order. Too many times, everybody talks about the theory of how to make money in real estate investing, but very few people actually give you the step-by-step. -step. And they're really simple. Go get approved for a loan, then go look for deals and make sure they make sense. Maurice, thank you very much for coming on board. I think if we have you on again next time, send me the presentation and I'll, I'll hit next and I'll play it for you. Fair enough? That would be great. Thank you, Victor. And you have a great trip. Call you me too, back. buddy. Thank you so much. Call me when you get back in town. You Take got care. it. Forgive my uh, my COVID look, but <laughs> I wasn't it's quite It's all prepared. good, man. It's all good. Thank all right. You. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay. So thank you, everybody, for uh, having Maurice come on board. Uh, we're trying in our own weird way to get back to somewhat normal, but it's still hard because I'd rather be in front of you. I'd rather be able to ans answer your questions directly. All right. So I did a presentation for you guys that are watching on 10 things that kill your profit on a rehab. But if you stay through the end, I'm also going to show you a real property that I'm willing to sell to you if you're interested. And I really want you to be a Surya member to have access to that. And I'm not promising I'm gonna sell it to anybody if you sign up for Surya. I'm saying in the next hour from uh, four to five, I'm gonna do Q and A. And I want you guys to really ask me the more detailed questions there if you're a Surya member only. But I'm gonna give the address to everybody. You'll contact me and I'll give you the combo code, but it's a three bedroom, two bath home, on a street uh, near Jackson Keller and Blanco. In the meantime, let me do my quick presentation that Jenny worked on for me. So I'm very grateful. I'm gonna do share the screen. There we go, share the screen. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. And I'm gonna do slideshow beginning. Come on now. There we go, from beginning. So she put a lot of time into this. It looks pretty cool. She loves graphics, all that good stuff. All right. 10 things that kill your profit on a rehab. The first one that I have found is that you have no organization or plan for your rehab. Ooh, I'm going to be an investor. I'm going to go buy a deal. And you really haven't thought it out what needs to be done and in what order. My advice to you, if you're watching this, is start writing down all the checklist things. And if you still don't know what to do, well, then you got to go find someone like myself or others who can teach you how to do this. But even so, you can always go on YouTube and Google and start writing down how to do a rehab. And you just have to, unfortunately, spend hours and hours doing it that way. So you come up with this somewhat of a concrete checklist. But in my opinion, you want to find someone who's done lots and lots of these. I've done hundreds of these type of transactions, and I've got my step-by-step -step process. I don't paint till everything is fixed up. I don't fix up anything until everything is removed. I don't even remove everything till I own the property. I don't even own the property till I've done my due diligence. I'm going in reverse engineering for you guys. But the point is come up with a checklist or a game plan. That is the number one thing that will kill your rehabs. There's four steps to rehabbing a home once you acquire it and it's yours. The big four steps, not all the details, the big four steps is number one, remove, remove, remove. You want to remove everything. So this past Friday, it's exactly what we did. We had to evict somebody out of a property, a squatter situation. We were able to finally do it even with COVID. And now we emptied out the home. There's nothing left in the home for the most part. The number two thing we would do is we would repair, repair, repair everything, fix everything. I know you want to get to painting. I know you want to get to flooring. Don't. Fix everything from bottom to up. Start with the foundation. Start with the roof. Those kind of things. One of the first things I like to do as part of my checklist is if I'm going to replace the windows, I want to order those day one because they'll take three to six weeks. And you want to order that as soon as possible. Uh, 
So you also want to make sure your um, your HVAC needs to be looked at. If you can salvage it, great. If you can't, be prepared to replace it. I don't recommend you replace your HVAC. You can get it removed, fix up the closet that it's in, and don't have it installed towards the end. That way, as you're rehabbing, someone's not stealing your HVAC unit. People have a tendency to run off with the condensers or the inside units or the copper wiring. Uh, so again, remove, 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 re uh, repair, 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 repaint, repaint, repaint is the third one. I want you to repaint everything inside and out. Of all the things you can do to make your home increase in value, it is paint. It's the cheapest thing, relatively speaking. So get it done inside and out, inside the garage even, the ceilings, the closets, you name it, get it repainted inside and out. Uh, number four, once you've repainted everything and everything's been fixed and textured and painted, you want to replace everything you can. Door handles, light fixtures, ceiling fans, toilets, countertops, cabinets can be salvaged a lot of times, repainted and put new handles on there, put some new liners. Your checklist is your walkthrough at all aspects of the rehab. And if you don't have a checklist, you're going to just screw yourself over. These mistakes that I normally see from investors are they have no game plan. They have no organization. Number two, biggest reasons why you're going to kill your rehabs and make very little profit is you have no reserve money. Rehabs can take several months or longer than anticipated. Borrowing money can become costly, especially if you're out of uh, out of this, excuse me, you're doing this rehab for a much longer period of time. I've often said to a lot of folks that want to do rehabs is don't do them if you need the money. I repeat, don't do rehabs if you need the money. It should be something that you do and then when you finally close, great. It just adds to your, you know, net worth, but it's not, you're not counting on it. I've seen so many investors screw themselves over by depending on these rehabs money. And then they start making mistake after mistake because they're getting so much pressure. As a bonus to this, uh, this slide here, don't borrow money from family. Treat it as a business. It's Thanksgiving coming up and all of a sudden you said you were gonna be done by October and you're not, it's gonna make so for some very uncomfortable Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners. So that's a bonus thing, don't borrow money from family. There's guys like Maurice or other hard money lenders that will lend you money. All right, let's go to the third one. Buying in the wrong areas is number three. Stay in affordable housing area. I've told many of my students and many of our attendees at our monthly events, try to buy typically between, you know, Highway 151, SeaWorld essentially, outside Loop 410, inside 1604, and west of 35. There's like a big rectangle in the north, northwest and northeast part of town. Yes, you can do other areas, but if you're asking for my advice to minimize your risk so that you don't lose your shirt on doing a deal, buy in those areas. We're talking thousands and thousands of homes in there that need your help. I often get people reach out to me, hey, I've got a property out in the middle of nowhere, Texas. I'm like, why would I go do that? There's plenty of deals in my backyard. If you only know how to look for them, what to do once you find them, and how to structure the deal. So buy in the right areas and buy affordable housing. When you buy too expensive of a house, you'll be waiting for a big payout. Your buyer pool goes smaller and smaller the higher the price. When you buy in bad areas where the schools and neighborhoods are bad, you may think, ooh, I got a great deal. But guess what? You're going to have a hard time selling it or your buyer getting approved for a loan. Number four, one of the things that can kill your deals these days is that the price for material and labor has gone up tremendously due to the pandemic and Chinese tariffs. I did a rehab, um, I don't know when it was, uh, late last year, and my costs went up 25% for my cabinets because they were coming from China through a wholesaler out of Houston. And all of a sudden my price went from here to here, but I had to do it because this was a very nice neighborhood and I had to you know, go up a little bit. But even if you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you're gonna find a lot of the material costs has gone up substantially. Um, you need to price check for general items, front doors, garage doors, all that stuff. Um, 
Large items needed in bulk are also going up in cost. Flooring, drywall, lumber, it's all going up. If you have an attitude, I can afford it regardless, you're gonna end up losing a lot of money. You gotta stay to a budget as much as possible. Even if that means you have to sometimes show up and get your hands dirty. It sucks, but sometimes you'll have to do that. Try to buy in, in basically good areas that are affordable and look at your comps based on those areas, not some fly in the, in the pie sky kind of situation. You understand what I mean. Can't say my quote sometimes. All right, I'm gonna tell you that I have been guilty of this one. That's right, not pulling your permits and having to wait months to get things square with the city. I did this and it literally made a profitable deal very, very small in profit. I was glad to just get out of the deal because I didn't pull my permits on one particular house thinking I didn't need to, and I screwed up. So if you want to basically screw up your deal, don't pull permits and then wait for the city to come down and shut you down. And I already had done the rehab. Everything was done. And then they shut me down. And I already had a buyer lined up at a great price. And then they shut me down. So don't do this. It's better just go pay the you know, $600 to $2,000 to get permits. And that way they see all the work is being done right. And then you're going to be protected. So again, I've done this. I've gotten myself in trouble. Don't do it. Okay. Some of you may want to start with smaller rehabs. I know you see all the damn TV shows that show that rehabbing is fun, but it's not. It's a lot of work. It takes hours and hours and hours and days and days and months. And it can be over a year for some investors. So be careful out there, would you? Now, one of my biggest advice to you is if you don't stage your home, you're just asking for buyers to give you low ball offers and for it to take longer to sell. So if you want to know a strategy that will kill your profits and rehabs is don't stage your home. I know you're trying to save money. I get it. But this should be one of those expenses that's automatic. It's automatic, kind of like going to a title company. There's certain expenses that are just automatic if you're going to rehab a home. So the cost for staging ranges from 2000 to 3000 And it's rare. I don't think I've ever had it where I didn't use staging. I didn't sell it within two to four weeks. Never have because it sells itself. It really makes them look like a model home. It's a beautiful thing. You ever been to a brand new spec home out in the middle of, you know, I-10 in San Antonio and new neighborhood? Do they stage their homes? Of course they do. Why? Because they know buyers lack imagination. They want to be able to live in a million dollar house. So they spend, you know, probably 50, grand in staging the model homes. So I encourage you to spend two or $3,000 to have someone come in stage it, set it all up for you, pictures, rugs, tables, chairs, everything. It's worth it. All right, next. Underestimating the real cost of closing twice on a deal will kill your profits on a rehab. When you first buy, the sellers want you to pay all the closing costs. We know this. But when it's time for you to resell, you have to do it again, but there are other costs associated with closing you may not be aware of. You didn't take these into consideration and you probably overpaid for the property so you can be a rehabber. So what are some of those things? Well, there's normal closing costs. I often tell investors 1% to 4% will be your closing costs at the title company. Okay, title insurance, it's about 1%. Then you got a survey, you'll have a home warranty. Then you get to the big stuff. You have prorated taxes. People always forget about prorated taxes. You bought it in March, but you don't sell it till December. Well, guess what? You have to pay for nine of those months of property taxes for the year. And if the taxes are four or 5,000, well, there you go. You're gonna have to pay three to $4,000 in property taxes. Commissions. If you're going through realtors, be prepared to pay those commissions. Here's a big one. Your buyer is a VA lender, FHA lender situation. They are going to demand that you pay for certain closing costs that the buyer, the buyer is not allowed to pay if you want to do a deal with them. So be aware of that. And then obviously in this day and age, your buyer's going to want you to pay pretty much all their closing costs. On average, you're looking at between four and $7,000 
that the lender's charging them fees and it's permissible to ask the seller to pay for all that. So be aware of that. There's HOA, home warranties, and all the other stuff that's on this screen for you. Listen, these can be a good profitable deals. But like, for example, I sold a property last year. It was a personal one. And we sold it for 310. 310. And it was free and clear. Didn't have a mortgage on it. It was a personal residence. And after the buyer commissions and other closing costs and this and that, we only walked away with 280. So basically 30 grand was gone in closing costs and commissions and a bunch of other crap fees. If you want to close the deal, that's sometimes what you have to do. You know, part of that was the buyer wanted us to pay $5,000 towards their closing costs and other stuff and other stuff. So just be aware of the back end closing costs. Hiring the wrong contractors can kill your deals. They want all their money up front and are typically working on multiple projects at the same time. And I hate to say this about that industry as a general, but I've seen it happen predominantly with contractors where when you give them money in advance, that money's already spent before they've even done anything. And so while they're finishing other projects, they're using your money to go and buy material for that property. And then they're hoping sometimes to get money from another new project to pay your stuff. So one of my biggest recommendations is that you don't let them use your money to pay other expenses. Instead, offer to pay and buy all the material in advance and have it delivered to the property so they're out no money. And if they're not willing to do that, my recommendation is that you find another contractor. Another thing that I do is I become my general contractor. I don't give the job to one contractor. They're only going to tap on 20% just for hiring workers, which you could have easily done yourself. Instead, when I have my painters come over, I have them give me a bid just for the labor. And then I ask them, what do you need as far as material? I order it and have it delivered to the property or have them go pick it up. It's either one of those two. Either I have it dropped or I have them go pick it up they're going to want you to have it waiting for them so they can be lazy, but put it in a writing, put it in writing that they're going to have to pick it up and that they have to clean up. And that if there's any messes because of their labor, you're going to take that off the top. They hate that of course, but if you want it done right, that's what you have to negotiate. I often tell them, I want to pay you to do this. And, and when I see it, it's like you never were there. You've not created new messages for me or big mistakes for me that I have to now fix up. Another thing you can do in an independent contractor agreement is set deadlines with basically liquidation damages. So for example, if I ask my painter, hey, when can you start and when can you finish? You know, say, I can start Monday. It's going to take me three days. I said, no problem. I'm going to give you through Saturday. If you finish in two days, I'll pay you the full amount. If you're not done by Saturday, that's twice the time you've asked me three extra days. Then every day after that, including weekends, I'm going to start deducting $250 a day. They're going to throw a hissy fist about it. Doesn't matter. What I tell them is, hey, you just told me you needed three days. I've given you three extra days just in case. Are you saying that I can't trust you to do what you promised you're going to do? And if they start giving you a hard time, move on to the next one. Seriously. I don't play around. These guys are trying to do three, four jobs at the same time, coming in for two hours to yours, two hours to the next one, two hours. Man, that's just a crappy way to do business. Either they're going to be there all the time, or guess what? Find someone else. There's just too many guys out there that need work. So I want to spend quite a bit of time on this being one of the most difficult things that can kill your real estate flips. Be clear and in writing with your contractors. Have them sign in blue ink what is expected of each other. Number nine, overestimating the resale value. There's too many investors out there who try to push the market. I'm going to give you an example for those who wait for the end, a real deal. I'm going to show you comps and everything. I'm going to walk you through it in real life because that's what's happening today for everybody who's watching this. So basically, you have to do your due diligence. You're trying to find like-kind properties in the same neighborhood. I've seen many wholesalers who cherry pick a property from three, four, five miles away that has nothing to do with your property neighborhood. 
as a way to rationalize saying that the home is valued this much. And when you and I both know it should be down here. So do your own due diligence. Never, ever, ever trust a wholesaler or a seller. They're always going to lie to you so that way they get more money out of you. And please, please, please don't do what a lot of newbies do. They go to Google and research on Zillow or Trulia or Redfin or whatever. Oh, it's going to be worth a million dollars. There was a, a funny story recently where uh, Trulia, uh, excuse me, the Zillow CEO, whatever, Zillow had his home worth at like five million and he listed it for 10 million. I mean, it was just the funniest darn thing. Um, talk to a good real estate agent. Talk to a good real estate agent if you don't have access to the MLS. Work something out with them where maybe they can make you an associate or something if you pay their, um, their quarterly fees. They're about 180 bucks every quarter. This we can have access to the MLS. I don't recommend that you become a real estate agent. There's too much cost and time associated. Your number one job should be finding deals and rehabbing if that's what you want to do. Finally, number 10, underestimating the repairs. Too many wholesalers try to convince you that all it needs is painting and flooring when it needs all this work that needs to be done to it. So I've listed four things you need to do for rehab as a game plan, but you also need to kind of overestimate your expenses when you're dealing with your sellers. They're not going to tell you about the mold behind the walls or that the bathroom cabinets and the toilets and the showers needs to be ripped out or that maybe you need some new wiring or the HVAC um, tubes in the attic need to be replaced or that the insulation needs to be replaced or that the roof needs to be replaced. All these things add up. When you first start out, you're not sure what to do. So I'm going to give you a simple rule of thumb. If it's a regular suburbs type home and it's just all cosmetic, I always start with a base of 25 grand. And then I add on it. Oh, it needs a new roof. Let's add another seven grand. Oh, it needs a new HVAC unit. And add another seven grand. Oh, new windows. Add another seven grand. Seven grand is my new number. It used to be 5,000 when I got started. Then it was 6,000. Now, just because of the increase in everything, I'm just putting seven grand. This doesn't even include foundation, by the way. So all these things keep adding up. And we're talking regular cosmetics. You know, your regular three bedroom, two bath ranch home that's 30, 40 years old. If you're talking about a 60, 80, 100 year old home, you might as well just double that as your base of 50 to 60,000. I was at a property two weeks ago. This home needed everything. I mean, down to the studs, it was stinky, uh, feces from animals everywhere. I think we came up with a number like 75 to 80 grand this past Saturday. I was over here at Fredericksburg in 410, and this home is, I think, about 67 years old. We came up with a bid of about 120,000 in rehab. So you got to take this part seriously. Don't underestimate your repairs if you want to prevent a big loss to your rehabs. Um, Jenny wanted me to do something here on the screen. Let me see if I can get this for you. Give me one second. So hang on, there we go. Oh boy, I don't think I can get it over here. There we go. So on the Trek website, you have this option to go in here and look at this checklist of things. So this is a good way to look at anything that needs to be fixed. So you just go to Trek. You just go to Google and type Trek. Seller's disclosure, you'll get this list. So just keep that in mind as you're doing these things, okay? All right. So I think we just have one more. Are you going to make the profit you wanted on the rehab? If you do, do it right. Do your due diligence. Underestimate the resale value. Overestimate the repairs. Uh, for example, a simple ARV of a home, $200,000, we started 70% for a reason. That 30%, that 30% off the top includes profit, taxes, holding costs, closing costs, commissions, oops. That 30% is non-negotiable, okay? Minus rehab. So if I thought the rehab was going to be $20,000, i would probably go twenty five dollars just to be on the safe side. We're just talking a simple home. So that's it. Do your due diligence when you do these rehabs. And if you haven't ever done one, I highly recommend you work with someone who has, or at least the bare minimum, find yourself a partner so you can work together. 
you know, when I first got started doing real estate investing, I didn't just dive in on my first rehab, not knowing what the heck I did, what I was supposed to do. I got a mentor and we did five deals together. And I learned so much, all of the intricacies of rehabbing homes. And to this day, I'm still learning. I'm always learning. Some of you are watching this. You want to be a badass tomorrow. Ain't going to happen. It takes you years to develop the necessary skills to think of yourself as an expert. Stop following the gurus. Follow a guru, someone who actually does this for a living, who's been doing it forever. I've been doing this since 2003. When I was a kid back in the 80s and 90s, my dad used to do this kind of stuff, and I used to watch him do it. And I'm telling you, I'm light years ahead of his abilities because I keep learning. He passed away, by the way, a long time ago. Anyway, so just be aware. Do your due diligence, and I highly recommend you get partners when you first get started. A few more things. I want to pitch you to join Surya. We do these webinars, yes. Those who'd like to go look at past webinars need to be members of Surya. In addition, you get discount on classes that we hold typically about once a month. You get access to a guy like me. I give you a 10-page new member package. Anybody who signs up today as a member of Surya, it's 150 bucks a year for one or 175 for you and a partner. It's 175 bucks to get all this stuff. I will also send you the latest code violations which have yet to come out this month, but I expect them to come out today or tomorrow. And there's thousands of potential leads that you can tap into, do the research, track them down, find the owners and make a deal so you can buy at huge discounts. So when you do your first rehab, you're gonna make a lot of money. So I encourage you to go to Saria.com. I'm gonna stop this here. I'm going to, there we go. Oh, there we go. I'm going to get out of here, close that sucker up. I'm going to go to the internet real quickly. And I'm going to show you the Surya website. I'm sure some of you guys know I've done this before. So dot Surya.com. There we go. I'm going to share the screen one more time. There we go. Come back here. Oh boy. There we go. So when you come in here, you can do our membership here and you scroll down to individual membership, dual membership, but also as a thing that I think if you're serious about real estate investing and you want to learn where to find the deals, how to find the deals, what to do once you get those deals, you should consider one of our three coaching programs. The first one is 649. It's 10 videos on how to wholesale. Those exact same 10 videos in manual are in the three-day coaching online, which is 1997, but now it's 30 videos. This is everything I got. A lot of these videos I've recorded in front of students. You're gonna hear a lot of the Q&A questions. The third one is exactly the F program, the three-day coaching, but now you're here with me for three days in my office, and you and I are gonna work on deals, typically one-on-one -on -one or within a small group here in my office. I moved recently back in uh, July to um, Woodstone and I-10, Woodstone and I-10 between Hebner and De Zavala. I've got a huge conference room. I've got masks. I've got tons and tons of hand sanitizer. So if you're serious, I'll even refund you the money. I repeat, I will refund you the $5,000 if you and I could do three deals. I'll give you $2,000, $2,000, and 1000 I make money by doing closings. I make money by you guys doing deals with me as partners, joint venture. And the bonus is I'm also going to put up the money to acquire the deals and to help clean them up and then to wholesale them. So I encourage you to consider our coaching program. I also want to take you guys to one more website. And we're going to be updating this even more. Uh, Jenny's kind of working on this. Um, there are services. Yeah, you guys know that this is why we do this kind of marketing. All this stuff is here. Deeds, affidavit of airships, owner finance, wraps, you name it. But we also have forms for you if you're looking to do your first acquisition, if you're looking to do your first sub two deal. I mean, we have lots of stuff here subject to transaction checklist. Here's a sample. Here's a blank one. I just got one from two of our students, uh, Jim and Rose here. Oh, well, there we go. So there it is. They just got me a new contract. I'm going to prepare the subject to. They're going to take ownership of a property by taking over the payments. 
without having to go and get a new loan. So it's all here for your sake. I've done it so that way if you have any questions, it's all here. I hope this helps you guys out. I really, really do. Now, as promised, for those of you who have stuck around, I'm gonna walk you through a real deal. Here you go, I own this property with my partner, Andy. So, we bought this property several months ago. We didn't record the deed until recently, but we own it. So this is the only owner of the property ever. And I think they built this in uh, 1955. He passed away many years ago. He had three kids and they too have passed away. And there's four grandkids and they're all fighting. We finally got them to cooperate. And so the problem we had is that we had COVID and we couldn't get the squatters out of there. We filed for eviction and we've had stop, go, stop, go. And we finally got it all done. And then we couldn't get the writ of possession done because of the CDC stopping all evictions. But for whatever reason, Texas said, screw you CDC, and they permitted us to do it. So last Friday, we were at the property. We did a whole video live and everything showing us emptying out this home. Once the constables left, you know, we did our thing to make that home empty as possible. So this is the property. Here's the tax value is 155. The square footage is 1251, built in 1955. And again, we own this property, okay? Let me minimize that. Here is the property. Where it's located is Jackson Keller and Blanco right here. There's a car wash right there, but several houses down is this property. And I want you guys to physically see it. Um, that's pretty much it, yep. It's all emptied out. That's the catch though, okay? Great neighborhood. Look at that big tree. Great neighborhood. There's a Blanco Road way down there. So yeah, if you're interested in this property, we know that it is worth 185 fixed up. How do I know that? How do I know that? Well, here's what I did for you guys. I did some comps today for you. These properties, if you look at them, take a screenshot if you want. These properties are literally within two or three blocks of this house, okay? Here's my fair part for you guys, right in the middle, days on the market. Look how short they're selling. Look how short they're selling. The square footage on these, okay, is right here. Now ours is 1,250, right? So you got one that's a bit smaller, that one sold for 179 because they did a really good job on rehabbing it. So when I think my home is worth 185, I really mean it. This other property, they didn't rehab it, Montview. But do your own due diligence. There you go. There's the MLS numbers. I did this for you guys. And so, hang on. Uh, no, I don't want it. Yes, I do. I'll save that later. Let me close that out. I'm going to move that out of the way. I'm going to do stop the sharing. And there we go. All right, so I talked to my associate partner on this one, Andy, and we both think the house is worth 185. So I get my calculator out times point that minus 30. All right, so we're looking to wholesale this bad boy for 105. I repeat, 105. So if you're serious, I'm going to put the address in the chat button 1031 Arroyo. Vista. Okay. The sales price for this property is going to be 105. There you go. So if you're serious and you actually have the cash to do a deal, let us know. My email is victor at mosslawfirm.com. So if you're interested, hang on. Jenny's telling me something. Uh, drop the link for the Q&A. My phone is having issues. Okay. So she also wants to remind you, for those who are members of Saria, you get to go into the next class that we're doing. So I'm sorry, I'm having to move the camera on the other screen. Uh, let me say no to that. Let me minimize that. Sorry about that. I will do that. Jenny, if you're watching this, there's a link that I'm going to put here as we get closer to ending, but I don't recall what that link was. Jenny, if you're listening to me, I'm gonna to go to the Zoom. Apologize, we're not too organized. There it is. There, show meeting invitation. 
Okay. There we go. Okay. Guys, go to Saria.com. If you're a member, you'll get it there. It starts in 14 minutes. In the meantime, I want to make sure that you guys had all your questions answered today. There's over 50 of you watching this. So in the chat button at the very bottom, you go to chat. Put in all your questions in there. I can start answering all your questions. If I'm that thorough and you don't have any questions, fantastic. But if I were you, I would want to know everything I can either about the Arroyo Vista property or any of the things that kill deals for profit. Anybody have any questions for me? Why don't you at least just say hi? All right. I got one. Thank you. You're so nice. You too, Reno. What are the qual qualifications to get approved for a hard money loan? Every one of them is different. Some of them don't care how bad your credit is or if you have no money. They're only going to lend money based on the loan to value. Others are going to demand that you have decent credit and you put at least 10 to 20% down. So my advice to you is shop around. Reno, uh, you showed the 2004 seller's disclosure. It was updated 20 thing. Your buddy, Reno. Ah, you smart ass. Yes, that was an old one. So just go to Trek. Type in seller's disclosure, track, you'll get the latest form. Thanks, bud. Uh, Gabe, what system software is used to track the rehab process? You know, weirdly enough, all I use is a spreadsheet from Excel. I write down all my expenses and the dates and what it was for, and I just keep a track running, and that's all I do. Not too extensive. As far as the checklist, I have my own separate Word doc that I use for every property, and I'll go through each one. And I'll keep changing it around to see what's up. Okay. Any other questions? Julio, thank you very much. All right. I'm going to stay here for a little bit. Alfredo, on the Arroyo House, how much on repairs, foundation, roof, electric, all that good stuff? Honestly, uh, gay, uh, excuse me, Alfredo, the HVAC needs to replace. I just got an email. Let me see if I can pull it up for you guys. Give me one second. This is from the All Foundation. I want to show you guys something, so it's pretty cool. Give me one second, share the screen. I had the house looked at by my buddy at All Foundation, and here's what he wrote. He said, good afternoon, Victor. This was uh, yesterday, I think. After reviewing the findings from the inspection that was conducted in Aurora Vista, our foundation is within tolerance. No work is needed at this time. However, there's a few items that we would recommend. Add some gutters, add some dirt in the back, add some circa ho soaker hoses. Always have the plumbing sewer lines checked for peace of mind. And so there you go. They found no repairs on the foundation. I think the roof looked good to me, but I'm not 100%. I think mostly what you're looking at is cosmetic and HVAC. If I had to estimate, you're looking at easily between 25 and 30,000, but you'll need to do your own estimate. So you have to decide. We're asking 105, you put 30 on top. At 135, you sell it for 185. There's still a good profit to be had there but you'll have to do your own due diligence. Um, Reno, you've got my cell phone, buddy. Just text me and I'll give you the combo code. The combo box is on the garage door. Let's see, do you have a checklist you can share for rehab? Gabe, I don't for non-students, but I can for students. Um, yes, you can go preview it, bud, on Reno. Uh, Victor, I have a possible deal on zip code 78204. Perhaps you'd be interested in partnering. Uh, do me a favor email me at victor at mosslawfirm.com. I'm going to tell you right now, my answer will probably be no because I know that area and I'm not a big fan whatsoever. But send it to me anyway and then try to share the numbers with me in case you're really serious, okay? Uh, let's see. Grizel's already asked me for the locks box code. You can't have it, Grizel, even though you're my sister. I'm joking. I'll send it to you in a bit. Anyway, does anybody have any other questions? All right, I'm going to end the meeting. I want to do a Q&A with all our Saria members in the next hour. So I'm going to end this one. I'll start the next one, but you got to be part of Saria. So if you haven't registered for Saria, please do so. I truly believe the knowledge I'm giving you is priceless. You're just going to save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in time and mistakes. I've done hundreds and hundreds of these deals. I look at them both as an attorney and as an investor, please join Saria for your sake. We'll send you a bunch of stuff. We're going to overwhelm you with good knowledge. If you're a cheap person, well, that's up to you. But 
we'll see you at our next free webinar, which is next month. In the meantime, thank you very much for everybody. Uh, as far as the, uh, the, the link there, Tania, you have to go to Saria.com and it'll be right there. In fact, you know what? Let me just double check before I hang up this meeting. Hang on. There we go. I'm going to go to Saria.com. There we go. And here's the events. And there it is. Let me do the share the screen for a second. And there you go, guys. So you need to go register right there on Saria.com. Upcoming events. Right there, you just click that and you go here. It won't let you register until you're a member of Saria. So just go at it. If you have any questions with regards to this and you're still having difficulty, do me a favor. Just go to Victor at Moss Law Firm. You know what? I'm just going to make it easy for you guys. Info at Saria. That's easy to remember. Saria, R E I A dot com. And then I will keep the email open so that way I can try to help you as we're doing the Q&A. In the meantime, thank you everybody for doing this webinar with us. I appreciate your attendance. Look forward to seeing you again. Take care.